Chad, a country in the Sahel region, was a French colony from 1900 to 1960. During those six decades, France had a significant influence on Chad, which left the country struggling to stand on its own after gaining independence. In 1986, Chad had to seek assistance from the French military to combat rebel forces. Since then, French troops have remained in Chad, operating without being held accountable for their actions. They had the freedom to engage in human rights violations, disregard government orders, and even kill individuals. However, the situation has started to change recently with the rise of coups and France's decreasing presence in Africa. When French troops committed a terrible act against locals, protests erupted, demanding the withdrawal of French forces. The sentiment is growing, and more protests are expected, echoing the success of the French troops leaving Niger. This incident that triggered the current situation involved the mistreatment of locals, leading to widespread outcry. In a recent tragic event at a French military base in northern Chad, a Chadian soldier was fatally shot by a French army nurse. The incident occurred in an area where French troops are stationed as part of their efforts to combat jihadist groups in the Sahel region. According to General Ali Makabir, the governor of the Borka region, a Chadian soldier, who was in an abnormal state, sought medical assistance at the French army base. However, the news surrounding the incident was fabricated, claiming that the soldier attacked the nurse with a scalpel in self-defense, leading to the nurse using his firearm and causing the soldier's death. This fabricated story is exposed when we consider the fact that nurses do not normally carry firearms, and it is illogical to assume that a nurse's role includes using a gun. It becomes evident that this was yet another case of an innocent person being unjustly killed. The news of the soldier's death led to day-long demonstrations by the people of the area, who gathered outside the base entrance in an attempt to gain access, but were unsuccessful. The protests eventually dispersed after nightfall, but the story does not end there. The incident took place in the context of France facing discontent from its former African colonies. Recent coups in Mali and Burkina Faso led France to withdraw its forces from those countries. Additionally, there has been pressure for France to leave Niger following the removal of Niger's pro-French elected president in July. A senior officer from the French forces in Chad's capital, N'Djamena, provided more information about the incident. It occurred during public medical consultations, where a Chadian soldier who was receiving treatment attacked a French nurse with a scalpel. In self-defense, the nurse had to use his weapon. This raises questions about why the Chadian soldier would do such a thing. It's important to note that the French military has been present in Chad for four decades, currently consisting of 40 soldiers. After the incident, both the French and Chadian military launched a joint inquiry into the matter. However, the local population was unhappy with what happened, leading to protests outside the military base. During these protests, two individuals attempted to infiltrate the French military base. Unfortunately, clashes broke out between the French army and hundreds of youths who were trying to breach the base. Tragically, at least two people lost their lives and 15 others, including women and children, were injured. Everest Jerome Tolda, a Chadian political scientist, mentioned that members of the Chadian parliament have called for the withdrawal of French military forces from the country after the incident involving the Chadian soldier who lost his life. As of now, there is a possibility of further protests across the country as the incident has deeply shocked the local population. Many people in Chad feel unsafe in their own country, fearing that French troops are pursuing them and killing them. Security forces are expected to maintain a heightened presence throughout the city in the coming hours and days. Due to this increased security presence, there may be disruptions in ground travel, and there is an elevated risk of confrontations with security forces if additional protests occur. To understand the anti-French protests in Chad, it's important to consider recent events. These protests have been directed against France, due to its support for the country's military-led government, which has sparked anger among Chadians and brought forth historical grievances related to France's colonial past. Chad has long been under the rule of an authoritarian military regime, with its leaders aligning themselves with France. 
However, the recent protests reflect the frustration of ordinary citizens with both the oppressive regime and France's perceived role as a supporter of democracy. Many Chadians view France negatively, attributing this sentiment to its support for the Idris Deby Itno dictatorship and the subsequent leadership of his unelected son. Idris Deby ruled Chad with an iron fist for over three decades, coming to power in 1990 after overthrowing another pro-French general, Hissen Habre. Both Deby and Habre fought against Libya, and French intervention in 1987 contributed to Deby's rise. Idris Deby's death at the hands of rebel forces led by former military officers with alleged ties to Russia resulted in his son, Mohamed Deby, assuming power without a democratic election and dissolving the parliament. These actions have fueled local discontent, with many Chadians perceiving France as supporting ongoing military rule. Furthermore, France's historical presence in Chad has been associated with resource exploitation, with Chadians receiving only a small share of the country's wealth despite being its citizens. This perception has further fueled anti-French sentiments among Chadians. The recent protests were organized by Wakit Tama, a growing civil society group that had participated in national talks aimed at addressing grievances among various ethnic, religious, and political factions. However, the government's decision to postpone these talks two weeks ago has heightened tensions with opposition groups like Wakit Tama. In the eyes of the protesters, France is seen as installing dictators and disregarding the rights of the Chadian people. Their demand is simple, they want their people to be respected. The intensity of the recent anti-French protests in Chad is also connected to France's diminishing influence in certain African countries. For instance, France decided to withdraw its troops from Mali in February amid growing public anger, and it has also withdrawn troops from Burkina Faso and Niger. It is important to note that President Macron's foreign policy has been criticized for its arrogance and outdated understanding of global affairs. Experts argue that France disregards the shifting power dynamics, especially in regions like West Africa where France once had influence. Unlike China, France is not seen as treating African nations as economic partners. This perception has contributed to France's growing rejection in African countries. To understand the root causes, we need to go back to the 19th century when European countries, including France, became increasingly interested in Africa. By 1887, France had already claimed territories in Africa, such as Ubangi Sherry, as areas of French influence. Within two years, France had occupied parts of southern Chad. During this time, French military expeditions faced resistance from Rabbi Azubair, who conducted slave raids in southern Chad and other regions. However, French forces eventually defeated Rabbi Azubair at the Battle of Kosseri in 1900. Subsequently, the French expanded their presence in eastern and northern Chad, encountering further resistance in conflicts like the Wadai War and in regions like Tibesti and Borco. Chad's colonial experience with France can be characterized by two key themes, the lack of policies aimed at unifying the territory and a slow pace of modernization. Chad held a low priority in the French colonial hierarchy ranking below non-African territories like North Africa and West Africa. The French primarily saw Chad as a source of raw cotton and cheap labor for more productive colonies to the south. As a result, there were minimal efforts to establish governance and maintain law and order in Chad. Large areas of Chad remained effectively ungoverned throughout the colonial period. In 1905, Chad was linked with three other French colonies to the south, including Gabon. However, Chad did not achieve separate colony status or unified administrative policies until 1920. These four colonies were collectively governed as French Equatorial Africa, with a governor general stationed in Brazzaville overseeing the federation. Lieutenant governors, appointed by the French government, were responsible for implementing the governor general's directives in each colony. While there were some decentralization efforts between 1910 and 1946, Chad's lieutenant governor had more autonomy due to its distance from Brazzaville and France's greater interest in the other colonies. Chad's administration was sparser in the northern and central regions compared to the south. 
In the desert regions of Borku, Enidi, and Tibesti, French military administrators reached an informal agreement with the desert inhabitants. In southern Chad, a direct civilian administration system was introduced among the Sara ethnic group and neighboring populations, which was somewhat different from the rest of Chad. Some economic development took place in the south, especially with the introduction of large-scale cotton production in 1929. However, despite these economic improvements, southern farmers were unhappy with the mandatory cotton production quotas and the low prices paid by France for cotton. The colonial administration's support of local chiefs further fueled resentment, as these chiefs were often appointed by the French in societies that previously had no centralized leadership. These factors contributed to the emergence of a sense of Sara ethnicity among the region's inhabitants. By 1953, politics in Chad began to shift away from European dominance, and the Chadian Progressive Party, PPT, emerged as the major rival to the UDT. Gabriel Lisette, a black colonial administrator born in Panama and posted to Chad in 1946, led the PPT. Lizette later became the Secretary General of the African Democratic Rally, a Marxist-oriented party considered radical at the time. The PPT originated as a territorial branch of the RDA and became the political vehicle for Chad's non-Muslim intellectuals. Traditional rulers aligned themselves with the UDT, which changed its name in the late 1950s to the Chadian Social Action due to internal divisions. Finally, in 1960, Chad gained independence, but it lacked the necessary institutions to effectively govern the country. Once again, France positioned itself as the so-called guardian of Chad, but there were concerns of potential exploitation. France played a significant role as Chad's primary foreign supporter and benefactor during the first three decades following independence. By the end of the 1980s, economic ties between Chad and France remained strong, with France providing development assistance through loans and grants. While France was no longer the top buyer of Chad's agricultural exports, it continued to offer substantial military support. Chad remained a member of the African financial community, with its currency, the CFA franc, pegged to the French franc. Furthermore, a significant portion of Chad's industrial and financial institutions were owned by French private and government investors. Furthermore, the French Treasury supported the Bank of Central African States, which served as the central bank for Chad and six other member countries. French policies toward Chad underwent changes from the 1970s under Char design to the 1980s under Mighton. Initially, the focus was on preserving French influence in Africa, exploiting Chad's natural resources, and countering Soviet influence in Francophone Africa. However, in 1981, when France's socialist government came to power, their stance shifted to ostensibly anti-colonialist positions and avoiding confrontation with Libya. President Maiten limited French military involvement in the region to defending the Njima region in 1983 and 1984. However, from that point onwards, France began to increase its military presence in Chad, which continues to this day. In 1990, France, along with Libya and Sudan, provided significant support for Idris Deby's successful coup against Hissan Hebre. Demby assumed the presidency and received ongoing French support to prevent his removal from office, leading to a continued French military presence in Chad. In recent years, tensions between France and its former African colonies, including Chad, have been simmering and often manifest in protests and demands for the withdrawal of French forces. Incidents such as the fatal shooting of a Chadian citizen by a French soldier have further strained the relationship between the French military and the Chadian people. Calls for a review of military agreements with France have gained political traction, indicating a growing discontent. However, despite these calls, France has maintained a firm stance on keeping its troops stationed in Chad. The people of Chad, who have harbored resentment against French forces since their colonial rule, now feel empowered to voice their opposition and demand the withdrawal of French troops. They believe that change is possible as a wave of change has swept across Africa. The Chadian people have taken to the streets and the situation will not settle until French troops leave. The question remains, will the French troops be compelled to leave Chad?
Many argue that Emmanuel Macron should save face and announce the withdrawal of French troops from Chad. The sentiment is strong among the Chadian people, who believe that nothing will be resolved until this happens. It is crucial to acknowledge their long-held feelings and the current wave of change in Africa. The Chadian people are determined to assert their power and demand the departure of French troops.